My name is Paula, Paula Clifford Scott. I carried the middle name around because I had five Clifford children and I've one great Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how I came to the chapel, that's a bit of a story. I was broken when I came here. I had just lost my daughter, my granddaughter, 9-11. And literally I came in here within months of that. Somebody brought me here and the kindness and the sympathy and the beauty of it. so many things, of so many people minding me and taking care of me. At that time, I couldn't write or read. I thought my sight and my hearing were going. I couldn't even do my checkbook. I wasn't able to do it for about a year. And uh, I really was in bits when I came to this church and after many conversations and they were so kind. And then I began to learn the Bible and take it very seriously. Well, that was after now that Ruth, my daughter, and my granddaughter had passed. And I knew I had an, an absolutely loving God. It was a very personal thing I had with Jesus. I still have it. Uh, anything I've ever asked him to help me with or to guide me on, <clears throat> it happened. And it was just like every day seemed to be like Christmas, as if I was opening a big bow and a big gift from Jesus, especially for me. It was just amazing. And I was very blessed I had that within me. And as Frank said last Sunday, the spirit of God within you is the most important thing. If you don't have that, really, you don't go very far from any place. You kind of stick within yourself. And um, I definitely had the spirit of God within me and it was working. And um, I was able one day to face Jesus and tell him, you gave me this beautiful child, my daughter Ruth, and I'm sending her back to you with love. And I'm not grumping or grousing about it. I just want you to mind her and mind my little granddaughter, Juliana Valentine. And once I had done that, it lifted a whole lot of terrible sadness, regret, I can't say I was ever angry because I seemed to understand something that was within myself. I guess it was kind of a resilience that I was working on. I'd always been a kind of a, having so many children, I'd always been able to work things out. And I was working this whole thing out with, you know, what was going on, the blowing up and everything. And then I realized how grateful I was that I'd had that time with Ruth and the little girl I used to mind her, she was four. And then I didn't know what was coming up. My son was in the building that day. He was there when his sister's plane went into the second tower. And I didn't know that for the longest, for the longest, longest time I didn't know it. He came, they were pronounced gone at three o'clock on that Tuesday, 9-11. The anger was something shocking. And really it was him expressing his grief. And it took me a while to realize this kid is in real trouble. You know, he'd seen more than he should have seen. And it was very, very tough. I think I would never have coped with it, only for the people who stood by me and were there for me. Um, I kept thinking to myself, it does take a village to mind somebody. I coped as best I could. I knew I had a job to do, a couple of jobs. I had to see after some people. Ruth's friends, for instance, I felt more sorry for these girls than I ever felt for myself. And she was going to meet a girl in California that day, her best friend from Marymount in California. They went to school together. And uh, that to me was kept me going because I was heartbroken for them. I was giving to him with gratitude. I felt good. I felt I was giving back to the Lord what was his in the first place. And nobody could have changed my mind about that. I didn't want to hear anybody else's take on it. I just knew if I did it, I would be okay. That's a hard question to be answered, really. But first of all, the good thing that came out was I came to the Bible Chapel and all the love 
and the understanding of the person who had never taken up the Bible before. And they were so patient with me when we were learning and I could never find the page and I could never find where this, that. I'm still a little bit like that, but I have wonderful friends in the chapel now and I just love it. Um, that's what gave me the strength, to be honest with you. And I had a mentor and Delight Wolf. Delight would call me to know how I was and did I enjoy the you know, the study that day and things, and she just stayed with me. And then there were other people came along and wonderful friendships from here. That's a loaded question. I now have arthritis <laughs> and I wish I didn't have it. That's what I'm wishing for. And no, I just see every year coming up as a challenge. My grandchildren are getting older. I had three grandchildren married in Ireland last year in December and uh, I have great grandchildren now so there's an awful lot to look forward to and but I've always kind of felt if when I get old I would be the greatest person at 70, I'd be the greatest person at 80. It's very exciting, it's a very exciting time to be in lots of things that have happened in the last 24 hours and this is where we really have to trust Jesus for everything every minute of every day be grateful and I'm you know what I'm beginning in my old age to be very grateful for not for the things I'm doing but that God allows me to do it um, I'm just amazing how much rope he gives me to do things and there's a tug every now and again you know telling me well be careful careful even though I've fallen twice in the last year so you know I still know God was watching me anyway and since I was that high I've had this great belief in Jesus. I really had. My parents used to be kind of amazed at me because I just knew Jesus was going to make it okay. I used to hate the expression, have a great day. <laughs> I'm going to have a great day and assure you I'm going home to clean the house, you know. But to tell somebody to look within themselves being grateful for things. I had a gratitude um, little book that I used to write in and it was very meaningful to myself. And I thought that everybody just said, have a grateful day. We turn in a little bit. We've so much to be grateful for, so much. <laughs>